So in today's video, I just want to walk you through some of the steps that I've taken to secure my Grandstream UCM 6302. Hi and welcome to the channel. My name is Tony and if this is your first time joining us, thank you. Be sure to subscribe and make sure you hit that little bell also so that you're alerted to when I release new content. So this is the fourth video in the Grandstream Learning As I Go series and it's been a couple of weeks now and the more I play with the device, the more I'm liking its features and actually learning its UI pretty well. Now, I've been diving into a lot of Grandstream online webinars and training and I want to show you some of the things that I learned from Grandstream about securing the UCM. Now, I'm sure there's a lot more things that can be done. However, I think this would be a good place to start. So some of the basic things you can do to secure the UCM right off the bat, keep it behind a firewall, change the default username and password, use a stronger password, create a secondary admin user, and keep the firmware and software up to date. Now, in addition to those basic concepts, I want to show you and share with you a couple of other steps and settings that I have made on the UCM to help keep it a little secure. So let's look at the maintenance area in the left window. Let's click first on user management. And I'm just showing you here that I did create a second admin. I also created a stronger password for the super admin, the name from the username from admin to something else. And as a result, I am no longer getting that weak login security message that I was getting in my previous videos. Next, let's come over to the login settings and let's click on login security. And I adjusted these three settings here. So the first setting is basically saying I have it set to 10 minutes. And if the system is idle for 10 minutes, let's say I get up, walk away from my desk thinking I'll be back in two to three minutes, but I'm not. The system will log out, preventing unauthorized access to the management portal. You could set this threshold here to whatever best fits your environment's needs. Now, the next setting, maximum number of login attempts. This is basically saying that if a user exceeds the threshold set here, that they will be banned for whatever threshold is set under user ban period. So if a user attempts more than three login attempts, the way I have it set, they'll be banned for a period of 10 minutes. Again, you could adjust these thresholds accordingly. Next, let's jump up to system settings. I want to show you what I did there. Under HTTP server, I disabled the redirect from port 80 and I also changed the port number. So basically what this is doing is forcing the person trying to log into the management portal to have to know the secure URL and the port number. Looking down at the certificate settings, one of the other things I did was request the certificate from Let's Encrypt. Now it's built right into the UCM, so there's really no excuse not to do this. I'm using DDNS, which works just fine. The only thing you have to do is remember to open up ports 80 and 443 on your router or firewall just to allow the certificate to be issued. Once it's issued, then you can close down those ports. So if you're getting any value out of today's video or you like this type of content, please hit that like button. It lets YouTube know that you like what we're doing here on the channel. Now, back to the video. Okay, next under system settings, sticking with the system settings, let's go to security settings. And I just wanna show you a couple other things here that I have set. So under static defense, under typical firewall settings, there are three options here, ping defense, SYN flood defense and ping of death defense. Now you see I have two out of three enabled. So ping defense, basically you configure this to, to decide whether you want the UCM to respond to ICM echo packets or not. If you enable this, then the UCM will not reply to ping. So usually ping is a good troubleshooting tool. So for that reason, I do not have that enabled. I do have enabled SYN flood defense. I don't know a lot about SYN floods, honestly. I know it's a form of denial of service attack. And Grandstream actually recommends not enabling this unless you have a reason to, like there's something going on with your system. However, I have it enabled because I noticed that whether it's enabled or not enabled, it's not putting any further demand on the processor. So I'm just going to leave it enabled and see how it goes. And then ping of death. It says here, check this box to enable ping of death defense up to five ping messages per second. So anything that exceeds that threshold, 
the UCM will block, thinking that is an a ping, ping of death attack. We'll skip dynamic defense because that's only available during when the UCM is in route mode. Let's jump over to fail to ban. Here I enabled this. It was not enabled by default. And what it is, is it just protects the system from excessive registration attempts. And again, you have thresholds here that you can set. Zero means the ban duration is permanent. So what I'm saying here is maximum number attempts to register five within a 60 second period. If it exceeds that, then that device will be banned from registering. You can also restrict via a whitelist, basically saying only allow devices to register to the system on these particular networks. And you can add additional networks here just by simply clicking on the plus sign. Now, Grantstream also recommends under local settings to enable asterisk service and login attack defense. What is login attack defense? Well, this is preventing against excessive logins, but it's looking at IP versus looking at user. So when user login attempts are exceeded, they get banned, but they can go to a different user account, right? And log in from a different account. Here it's looking at IP. So if an IP attempts excessive number of registrations, then it will be blocked from registering to the system. Under SSH, I just have it disabled. If I ever need to do anything with SSH, I can enable it, go in, do what I have to do, and then come back and disable it. And lastly, I just want to take you up under extensions and looking at the outbound routes. I didn't do much here with the outbound routes other than change the dial pattern. I just narrowed it down to 10 digit dialing instead of having that very generic X period with the, you know, the wild card and plus X period. And in another video, we're going to take a look at some other ways to control and, and lock down your outbound routes, such as using passwords, requiring um, extensions to be members of pin groups, and also using the enable filter on source caller ID. So there are some of the steps that I've taken to help secure and protect the UCM 6302. Let me know if you have any other suggestions, just put them down in the comments below. So if you found any value in today's video, please give it a thumbs up. Be sure to check out some of the other videos that I have listed up above. Please remember, subscribe, like, and share this video. And thank you for using my Amazon affiliate links. I know they don't change your price, but they do help out the channel. My name is Tony with Quick Tech Solutions. As always, please stay safe. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time. And as always, I'd like to thank our Patreon supporters, including our most recent gold member, Dennis Pillow. And if you would like to help support the channel, there's links to the Patreon page and PayPal down in the video description.